I think it's safe to assume most everyone is aware of the fact that their kidneys produce urine. They do this by filtering toxins away from blood and excreting them into the urine. But your kidneys do so much more than that. They ensure that your body doesn't become too acidic or too basic, either of which could kill you. They produce a hormone called erythropoietin that allows for the production of red blood cells. They also activate vitamin D so that your bones can grow strong and they make sure your blood pressure stays at an appropriate level. This is precisely why monitoring kidney health through two critical values is very important in ensuring that you stay healthy and happy. When proteins are digested by your body, a substance called ammonia is generated. Ammonia then goes to the liver, where it is converted into urea, and this travels via the blood to the kidneys, where it is excreted out in the urine as a waste product. So, blood tests can determine the level of BUN, or blood urea nitrogen, in your body as an important indicator of liver and more so kidney health. The normal range of BUN found in the blood is approximately 8 mg per deciliter to 18 mg per deciliter. Every laboratory that measures these values may have slightly higher or lower ranges, but that's something I don't want you to concern yourself with right now. Instead, I'd like to get you to understand what abnormally elevated or decreased levels of BUN signal to a doctor. I recently told you that urea is made in the liver. The liver is like a factory that produces a product, urea. In order for a factory to produce something you'll agree with me needs healthy workers and raw material with which to produce their goods. If the liver is our factory, but the liver cells, the factory workers, are sick, then production drops. Therefore, severe liver disease or liver failure causes BUN to be lower than normal. Furthermore, if there's malnutrition, then the liver has little raw material to convert into urea, thereby also abnormally decreasing the levels of BUN. On the other hand, higher than normal BUN levels are a big indicator of the fact that something is impairing the excretion of adequate amounts of BUN. We already know urea is excreted in the kidneys, so it's no shocker that elevated levels of BUN point to this. However, the cause of impaired excretion doesn't always have to be the kidney's direct fault. For instance, congestive heart failure impairs proper blood volume delivery to the kidneys. The kidneys then think that the body has a low blood volume, which may not necessarily be true. In order to make up for this effective or ineffect blood volume depletion as a result of heart failure, the kidneys reabsorb as much water back into circulation as possible. This, for reasons beyond this lesson, also causes more urea to be reabsorbed back into circulation as well, causing a rise in BUN. When the kidneys don't get enough blood delivered to them for filtration, we term this pre-renal failure. Pre-renal failure can occur as a result of any cause of low blood volume, aka hypovolemia, or it may occur due to effective volume depletion, causing improper perfusion of the kidneys in a normal volemic person in cases such as congestive heart failure. What this really means is that while there may be enough or even more than enough fluid in our vasculature, it's not getting to our kidneys anyways, in effect causing a quasi-hypovolemic state from the kidney's perspective. In either case, the problem in pre-renal failure is somewhere pre or before the kidneys are able to do their job and the kidneys are many times happy and healthy, at least in the beginning. But when the kidneys are actually sick themselves, we term this intrinsic renal failure. In this case, the urea is unable to be filtered out of the blood properly because the kidneys are very sick, resulting in increased levels of urea in the blood. Finally, in cases where everything is fine except for the fact that the outflow of urine is blocked somewhere in the ureters, bladder, or urethra due to things like stones or cancer, then we term this post-renal failure because the problem occurs post or after the healthy kidneys have finished doing their job properly. Here, BUN rises because of a backup of urine in the urinary tract system, thereby decreasing glomerular filtration and therefore increasing waste retention in the blood. Let's boil all the three causes down to a quick example. If you have a water pump, a hose from the pump to a glass cylinder with a filter, and a hose from the cylinder to the floor, you can recreate the three causes of renal failure. 
If the pump is broken or not enough water is available to be pumped, this is pre-renal failure. If the filter in the glass cylinder is plugged up or broken, this is renal failure. If the hose coming out of the cylinder is twisted, kinked, squeezed, or plugged up, that's a post-renal cause of renal failure. Other than looking for BUN to help us diagnose kidney disease, we can also measure a substance in the blood that is called creatinine. Creatinine is a normal byproduct of muscle metabolism that is excreted by the kidneys, with normal serum values of about 0.6 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. Unlike urea, creatinine cannot be reabsorbed by the kidneys. For that, and other reasons, it's a good measure of glomerular filtration rate, the rate at which your blood is filtered, and therefore how well the kidneys function. So, if the glomerular filtration rate decreases, creatinine can't be filtered out of the blood and into urine effectively, causing the creatinine levels to rise in the blood and vice versa. Because it is a breakdown product of muscle metabolism, its levels may decrease in cases of low muscle mass, such as older patients, whereas increased levels of creatinine occur in any of the three categories of renal failure I outlined before for BUN. However, there is an important distinction I want to make. Using these two values together in a ratio format helps us better pinpoint whether the cause of renal failure is pre-renal, renal, or post-renal in nature. In cases of pre-renal failure, I mentioned before that urea will be reabsorbed by the kidneys, elevating it much more so in blood than creatinine, which cannot be reabsorbed. Therefore, the ratio of BUN to creatinine will be greater than 20 to 1. In intrinsic renal failure and post-renal failure, there is no reason for urea to be reabsorbed because there is no hypovolemia to force the kidneys to reabsorb sodium water and thereby urea even if they could. In intrinsic and post-renal failure, the problem isn't with blood volume, it's with the kidneys or beyond. Therefore, the levels of BUN in the blood won't be as elevated as per pre-renal failure. This means that the ratio of BUN to creatinine will decrease to less than 20 to 1. In any case, an elevation of creatinine and BUN is known as azotemia and should always be investigated as to its root cause. Again, azotemia is an elevation of creatinine and BUN, which can be pre-renal, renal, or post-renal in nature. BUN stands for blood urea nitrogen and is representative of the urea produced by the liver, whereas creatinine is a normal byproduct of muscle metabolism that is excreted by the kidneys. If the cause of renal failure is pre-renal due to something like hypovolemia or low blood volume or effective low blood volume as a result of congestive heart failure, then the ratio of BUN to creatinine will be greater than 20 to 1. Otherwise, if the problem is renal or post-renal, it will be less than 20 to 1.